Hello and welcome to Current Issues with me, Tarun. The Comptroller and Auditor General, in its report, while speaking about the e-auction process for coal, which happened in 2015, said that guidelines should have been laid down prior to the auction process to avoid unnecessary litigation and also the said guidelines would have ensured that the coal auctions happened in an even transparent fair and in all fairness and it has recommended that such steps should be taken. To discuss this issue in detail, I have Dr. M.P. Narayananji, he is former chairman, Coal India Limited and Alok Partiji, he is former coal secretary who would also be joining me from the video link very soon. But first, let me go across to MP Narayananji. He is a former chairman of Coal India. MP Narayananji, what would be your opening comment on the larger issue of e-auction of coal? Well, uh, this has been an experiment. Perhaps um, people have been talking about it for quite a few years back after the coal scam cropped up. And uh, I personally feel there is uh, nothing wrong. There is a lot of transparency. Uh, auctioning is not bad, but yes. to the best of my information and knowledge, uh, auction is not practiced uh, anywhere else in the world. But that's At a, least I have. That's a big admission you're making? That yeah. auction doesn't happen in No. Area? It's there. I have myself ch checked up in many of the European countries particularly. Yes. And uh, they are rather surprised to see that you are going in for an auction. But then their problem has been that there has not been any scam or something like that compelling them to go in for an auction. Yes, also. but still speaking, nowhere in the world is coal auctioned. Coal mines auctioned, that's what you're saying. Yes. So what any, are the... Any, any mineral auction, okay. any mine. So what, uh, what kind of parameters do they go by when auctioning? What is the technical capability? They, they, they first of all, uh, uh, provided the technical competence of the person concerned to yes. whom they have to allot the coal or mineral, yes. his uh, capability and competence to mine. Yes. He is, uh, I mean, uh, whereas in case of the, the previous allocation of this coal, yes. this was not considered as a main feature. Okay. So, uh, I'll, I'll go, I'll, we'll start going to the, I'll refer to the CAG report which was released yeah. yesterday. And the CAG report states, and I quote, that the audit observed that preferred bidders of the coal mines for which uh, preferred bidders of the coal mines for which nomina nominated authority the recommendations which are rejected file petition before the honorable high court so the the bidders whose mines were rejected went to the high court this is what the cag report states and referring to that it also states audit is of the view that guidelines incorporating the parameters to be applied by the nominating authority and by Ministry of Coal for evaluation of final bid prices would enhance transparency of the bidding process and may eliminate avoidable litigation. So, are you think a very important point made by the Comptroller and Auditor General in his report? Uh, you see, can the CAG assure that once the guidelines are formed, there won't be any litigation? Yes. The litigation is bound to be there. Yes. The loser will go there because he will find out some sort of a grievance, etc., etc. Et yes. But I agree with CAG that there should have been uh, proper guidelines. But why uh, guidelines have not been drawn? I mean, uh, rightly so, the ministry hmm. uh, has um, explained, I found, yes. that uh, this is the first occasion. Huh. You see, for example, when we uh, nationalized the coal mines, when the ordinance was issued, yes. there were a lot of loopholes in that. I was actually associated at the yes. time with that. And um, over a period, it was, uh, things evolved itself correctly. So, what you are saying, Mr. Narayananji, is that uh, guidelines as such should have been there. Should have but been the there. system evolved slowly. But, it would but Prima Fesa, uh, do you feel that if guidelines would have been made, it would have been better? It would have been better, definitely. Okay. There would have been less type of complaints or uh, apprehensions. Okay. So, why do you think that the guidelines were overlooked? Was there less time or because it was the first time? It is the first time. Yes. I mean, uh, I, I personally feel that um, huh. there has been a pressure at yes. that time. Yes. And uh, once uh, 
uh, you found uh, the, there had been a lot of complaints on the previous type of location, etc. Yes. And uh, auction, they thought, is a panacea for all these evils. I want to ask you, is there any, you feel that because of these reasons, is there very any particular fear in the bureaucracy at large because of so much of litigation that happens? You think bureaucracy fears and the, out of that a lot of steps get overlooked? Well, this is also a fact I personally feel that uh, nowadays which uh, were one of the official in the government has also come openly in the press, I say. Yes. That's why I'm getting. Yes. He says that uh, the problem is with the five C's. Yes. That they are there. Yes. And I agree with him completely. Okay. Today, people are quite reluctant to come forward and take a decision. They may not agree openly. Yes. They may not agree. But I think we must reveal the name of the man. He was none other than our coal secretary Anil Swaroop. He made that comment. Well, <laughs> yes, I didn't want to name. Yes. But he did. But I entirely agree with him. Huh. And not only I, yes. quite a few of these. But, uh, but I people. think Anil Swaroop ji, our coal secretary, was in fact put it out on his Facebook. Yeah. He spoke to newspapers. Yeah. So I think he was very open about he, this I, apprehension. I, I, I was happy. I was one of the first in the Facebook to compliment him on this also. Achha. Okay. Because now, everybody feels that, uh, say for example, take this uh, um, uh, CAG business, uh, uh, yes. I mean raising objections on this guideline, etc., etc. Yes. Uh, well, uh, there should be a system then, then CAG nominate uh, one of his own officers to be a part of the decision making in all the ministries. Okay. That's all. Okay. Okay, I'll go across to Alok Party, his former uh, coal secretary. Alok Party ji, I would like to uh, ask you, uh, in this whole coal auction process, uh, the, the CAG has come forward with a comment saying that guidelines should have been in place for enhanced transparency and fairness. Uh, what do you think about this whole issue and the auction at large? What would be your opening comment for today's discussion? Uh, well, uh, in a way he is right, yes. because the issue which he has brought out in terms of uh, the need for guidelines yes. emanates from the fact that uh, the guidelines or, or the process itself allowed people uh, to kind of, you know, form JVs and, and an attempt to a bit of cartelization or whatever you could call it. Well, uh, if you go back two years or three years back, the, the same kind of criticism was there for against the government and the screening committee that allotted number of blocks to a group of industry. And this precaution could have been taken right in the beginning. Whether it was by oversight or whatever, it's very difficult to say. But it looks as if uh, the matter was done in a bit of a hurry. Okay. And maybe that was the reason that uh, ultimately for the third round they had to make that correction. Okay. Uh, but what really is uh, surprising is that uh, when we talk of uh, a declaration by the designated authority yes. as the preferred bidder, then the guidelines are, are silent as to what is to be done next. It obviously means that the preferred bidder should be declared as the bid winner. Yes. But in some cases, when it went to the government, there were some variations, some changes. Yes. And obviously, it's not very clear as to how this has been arrived at. Yes. In the case of uh, power, it was people went to the court. Now, if you make a little comparison with uh, saying that there was lack of transparency, etc. in the process in which uh, the screening committee did its work. Then here also you, you start thinking whether this reference to the government and then working without guidelines could also be a comparison of, uh, of sorts. And uh, while in the uh, old case there were hardly any objections or cases in the courts, here there is a whole series of cases in the court. Well, it is quite natural if you go through a process of bidding and then at the, at the end of it you do not honor exactly what the, the rules say, there is bound to be litigation. 
Yes. So I feel that while I agree with Mr. Narayanan that it was a learning curve and it is the first time, but then I think enough due diligence should have been there to understand the nuances of, of, of all these uh, issues. Okay. That's and a then very... tread it carefully into the auctioning uh, uh, this thing uh, process. Okay. Before I move to the next on the whole, yes. Auctioning uh, is a is a is a process which was decided by the government long time back. The rules came out, amendments were made, and so and so. All that is there. Uh, a very fundamental issue comes in that why is it that auction is not a very preferred kind of a process for allocation of natural resources? in many other parts of the world. One has to now look back and see whether this is, whether you can really uh, fix, uh, you know, natural resources for 30 years at a price when the world is changing so fast. Yes. I think, I think the auctioning process needs to look at all these things very carefully. Uh, very important points made by Alok. Uh, these Party are some of my comments. Yes. Partiji gave a very important point Hello. too that enough due diligence on guidelines should have been done and also he spoke about what is the world scenario and you can't have a 30 year horizon when the world is changing so fast. Narayananji, what would you think of these points? Well, uh, one thing, let me be very clear, if, uh, litigations, of course it has been recently a sort of a, a issues taken by various courts. Yes. I do not know to how far they have been technically competent to sort of uh, think about it with yes. all due respects to them. But everybody is apprehending on the court. Yes. And um, uh, I as I mentioned it, can the CA be assured that uh, with the guidelines being that there the litigation would stop? No. Yes. Litigations would continue. Yes. They would. Uh, but, uh, that is number one. Number two, uh, the auction per se has its own uh, advantages and disadvantages. Yes. Uh, the main point is that uh, nowhere else in the world. Obviously, there must be some reason for them not going in for the auction. But Narayanji, that's a very important point. All over the world, if it doesn't happen, there must be some reason. That's right. If in some country it has been happening, yes. I am not aware, then the, uh, the, our ministry, our government should have referred and found out their own practical problems, difficulties that they place, yeah. that they faced. Huh. They should have been done. But as I told you, the anything, this is just the beginning. Yes. And there's bound to be some issues here or there. Okay. If the government, I personally feel that there should uh, evolve some sort of a consultative mechanism, yes. dialogue yes. with the associations. So you mean industry. industry should have been bought on board when such important decisions, at least their views should have been heard? Their, their views. We have uh, like Indian Coal Forum or yes. Indian Energy Forum yes. and uh, that thing. Okay. Uh, plus the Consumers Association. Okay. They could have consulted them. This is what we do it and then okay. what do you want to say? Okay. Perhaps they will do it now. Okay. Yes. Okay. Perhaps they will do it now. Uh, I am going to Partiji and uh, I am reading out a statement, uh, a line from the CAG report. Patiji, the line st says, and I quote, the absence of broad guidelines for evaluation of final price bids by the nominated authority and the central government may, in the opinion of audit, impact the degree of robustness, transparency and fairness of the bidding process. Uh, Patiji, do you think uh, the CAG has been very categorical in raising this point? Uh, yes, to some extent, yes, he is categorical. He is saying that uh, he is basically referring to the case where the preferred bidder was declared by the uh, designated authority, but when it came to government, there was a different view. Yes. In fact, uh, uh, this is where they feel that uh, had there been any guidelines, then this would not have happened. Okay. And this actually it does lead to a question of transparency yes. because if there is a, a process of bidding and the preferred bidder, you cannot start setting another, another standard when it comes to government. That, that itself leads to a, a question mark which CAG has pointed out. Yes. 
Okay. I am going across and ask, uh, requesting uh, Narayanan ji to comment on this uh, particular line and very succinct comment that the CAG put forth. I, I, I personally feel so far uh, uh, guidelines, I say tell you, is not the panacea of all evils. Yes. It's only an indicative procedure. That's yes. right. Yes. If it is in sort of an, uh, uh, an act of parliament or uh, administrative orders issued by the government, etc., then we can say here yeah, guidelines, something beyond guidelines also is possible. Yes. So I don't think guideline is the final line you can draw and then this would not have happened. Yes. Yes. Okay. I'm going to Parti ji and ask him, uh, him a comment. There is one more comment that was made by the CAG. The CAG says yes. that the reply of the Ministry of Coal that broad guidelines mm. for evaluation could not be laid down is not acceptable mm. since both the nominated authority and the ministry have applied mm. certain parameters while deciding on the acceptability or otherwise of the eight bids subjected to re-examination. Uh. Well, I, I think to some extent the AG is right. Yes. Because, <clears throat> because uh, 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 Mr. Narayanan may say that, uh, and I quite may, may, may disagree to slight extent with him, that uh, guidelines are not a panacea to all the, the problems. Yes. But the, the issue is that in the absence of guidelines, there is no direction in which the authorities can move. There, within the guidelines, there may be discretions which the authorities can exercise. But to say that you work without guidelines uh, would really mean, uh, uh, to, to a great extent, arbitrary nature. Yes. It would be arbitrary. So, Partiji, uh, uh, Partiji when the yes. uh, CAG has uh, said, Yes, please. Uh, when the CAG has actually said that uh, that this is not acceptable, means that he is really pointing out to the fact that uh, once there is a process by which you have declared a person bidder to be the the bidder who has who, who should be given uh, who should be declared as the the winner then you start re-examining as to whether uh, you had got good, um, uh, the, the, the bid was okay, whether it was high price or low price or anything. It leads to a lot of uh, arbitrary decision making. So in fact, the, the government should not be doing that. And that's what the CAG is saying, that it is not acceptable. If you say that the preferred uh, bidder is the actual person, then you stop at that and you accept it. Yes. There is no question of uh, starting the, the evaluation of the, uh, the value as to whether the bid was high or low because it has gone through a process which you have put uh, as, as, as the process. Yes. Okay. Point taken. I am going to Narayan. I hope, I, I, hope I, I am clear now. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Uh, I am going to Narayanji. Narayanji, when we started hmm. the debate in the opening comment, you said that guidelines should have been there at least as a primer to the process, but then you also added that the process evolves. You made two process points, but uh, I would like to ask your comment particularly on these three lines which say that it is not acceptable that broad guidelines for evaluation uh, could not be laid down since both nominated authority and ministry have applied certain parameters while deciding on acceptability or otherwise of eight bids subjected to re-examination. But it's obvious that uh, ministry has not uh, uh, taken any of these decisions without any uh, terms and conditions. There are terms and conditions in that you attend a form itself, yes. how it will be done. Yes. There have been the bidders have been taken into confidence, whatever yes. it is yes. there. Uh, so I personally feel that uh, uh, the uh, guidelines would have facilitated and uh, perhaps this type of uh, uh, competent authority returning the papers back to the uh, yes. uh, what nominated authority, etc., yes. may, yes. may not have been there. Okay. Otherwise, but it evolves itself. I told you that um, the coal mines uh, nationalization, that's one of the yes. typical uh, examples. Narenji, I would like to ask you, since headed Coal India Limited and you are in charge of the very company which supplies about 90 percent of the coal requirements of the country. Uh, would you tell me that 
is an industry executive dialogue the need of the hour to solve such and many other upcoming issues? Any industry, why coal? Dialogue yes. always helps. Yes. Dialogue, you come to know what the other man feels. It's not necessary that uh, you are bound by what he says. So you mean an open dialogue? Yes, it's an open dialogue. Yes. There are competent people, competent associations, groups available. Yes. And then they can just... I, I'm going to take Partiji's view on this. Partiji, uh, since you chaired and you were uh, heading the ministry in a yes. way as secretary and guiding it, uh, do you feel that when such critical decisions are taken and for the first time in the country options for coal happened, uh, Partiji, what would you suggest that a wider industry consultation becomes necessary going forward when such critical steps are being taken which uh, relates to investment and committed investment of thousands of crores made by industry which of course is financed by public sector banks? Um, I quite agree with Mr. Narayanan when he said that there should be an open dialogue. I think the process of consultation and forming any rule, any law is a, is a compulsion. It's a, it's, there's no, nothing you can make laws and rules in a vacuum. You can't run away from the actually stakeholders and make a law. A very wide uh, extent of, uh, of uh, consultation taking into account what could be the difficulties what could be the various nuances in, 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 a, in a situation like this where there was a snap, you know, you snapped everything all of a sudden. Yes. And this raised various issues with regard to people who had mines, who, who were allotted mines, who were working on end-use plants, some of them ready, some of them uh, banks had given a lot of loans at various stages. Now, unless and until you take that on board as to what would be the outcome of a snap like this, then you are basically leading to a situation where there will be a whole lot of litigations, yes. not only um, with the, the uh, industry uh, or the, uh, and the government, but between the allottees and post allottees, government, state governments and the present allottees. All sorts of litigations would come up, all sorts of differences would come up. And you cannot get away uh, by, uh, by, uh, by, uh, by simply having a, a law which says that, okay, this is the way to sort it out and you have to do it. Because if somebody's fundamentals are hurt, he will go to the court. And if he goes to court, the matter is going to drag and drag. And this is exactly perhaps what is happening in the field today. Yes. So a consultation, a very wide consultation to understand all the uh, nuances is I think not only uh, uh, it, it, it's it's absolutely necessary. It's, you can't get away with it without it. Okay, I'm uh, going to uh, get in Narayanan ji and take his comments on this issue. I I'm not very sure. I'm not just I'm not just wanted to add that I'm not very sure whether in the present case a very wide consultation took. But yes, pre-bid meetings did take place. Whether all the views were taken on board or not, I am not aware. Okay. Uh, Narayanan ji, going forward, since uh, auctions have been happening and uh, they are slated to happen across sectors now, uh, what would you suggest uh, so that this process evolves into a process where there are no hiccups? A process? I didn't get it. Uh, without any hiccups or any problems. So going forward, what would you suggest? Well, uh, this is uh, what you call um, a transit point. Yes. And uh, we have taken a step forward from allocation to auction. Yes. And uh, we can't get into like a sort of a Tughlaq regime that going back to that going. Yes. We, we must give a fair chance to this auction. Yes. And there again consultation comes. People, mm. I mean, I would like to, if the minister is there, to call everybody and discuss. Yes. Why? What, do you, what would you like to do yes. for this? And I personally feel so auction system should continue. Yes. And uh, there is no nothing that has happened for us to give up that. Yes. Yes. That is that. Okay. Okay. I'm going to Partiji. Partiji, uh, as somebody uh, who has chaired the ministry as secretary, could you tell us what is the way forward? Because if auctions are going to happen even in mm -hmm. future, what is the way forward? How do you look at it? What kind of things that you would advise and suggest should be done? Uh, to not only improve the auctioning let me, process. Let me. Yes, please. Uh, I can give my own. 
I can give my own opinion on this. Yes. The… one of the first and foremost thing I would say about… Uh, about uh, natural or ores or uh, mining, coal in particular… Yes. …that uh, the whole process of allotting or auctioning a mine against an end use will always have this problem because one doesn't know what the end use economics will be in the future. You do not know what the ore economics is going to be, the coal ore economics in the future. So, it's, it's better not to link this because we do land up into making mines trying to be of sizes that will suit the end use, which is a very unnatural thing to do. It is better to uh, open the sector for commercial mining and allow people to mine coal and sell it in the market and anybody who wants it can, can, can buy it, whether on a, on a long term basis or on a spot auction basis or whatever. If the government wants that much of the coal should go to power sector, they can fix a certain percentages. So, Partiji, what you are saying? <clears throat> Yes, please. But second thing I would like to say is that even if the auction is done, commercial mining, if it is suggested, an auction has to be done for that. My suggestion is that they should simplify the process in which there is no scope for any kind of manipulation at any later stage during the life of the mine. Yes. There should be something which is equitable with everybody because one thing must realize that if you are asking people to follow a revenue model, you, are, you have to have a very strong enforcement mechanism to, say, to tell you how much the miner is actually mining and how much premium he is going to pay. Yes. We don't have that in, on the ground today and therefore uh, uh, to, to expect a very fair play after take in, in this revenue model in particularly for a thing like coal is going to be very difficult. Okay, okay. I am going to Narayan ji and going to ask him uh, what do you think of the points Parthi ji made when he sp spoke of going forward and how to ensure fairness and what he sees as a solution or at least the way forward? Uh, I think I agree with uh, Mr. Parthi on some of his points very yes. clearly. Yes. Uh, in the absence of, I mean, I would personally, I have been. Uh, very vocal on the subject, throw open the sector. Yes. I have been very vocal on it. Throw open the sector. Yeah, throw. I take that as your closing comment, but give me your closing yeah, comment yeah. in about 30 seconds. Yeah. What would be your closing comment? Yeah. Closing comment is that uh, having taken up this auction system, yes. I wouldn't like that at any stage to go back on that. Yes. We would like to uh, put it to a proper trial. And perhaps it will come out with some sort of good results also. We yes. don't know. Yes. I mean, we don't have any experience from any other countries yes. or in our own country anywhere. Yes. Yes. Even the mining sector is now following coal sector yes. for going for auction. Yes. It has to be seen. Yes. But the oil sector did it and they had their own perhaps. Uh, so, but, but, but you vote that uh, all in all you should throw open the sector. That's your tagline as, as yeah. I read, throwing open the sector. Partiji, what would be your closing comment for today's uh, discussion? I, uh, my c comments are that uh, the sooner the government thinks in terms of commercial mining of coal <laughs> and come up with a more simplified method of auctioning the mines, yes. that would show the, the way forward. Okay. Thank you so much Alok Partiji and thank you so much MP Narayananji for sharing your views on the whole auction process. As Partiji said and I can conclude with that a more simpler method for auctions as, as also auctions which happen and commercial mining is also allowed and throwing open the sector is more important plus i would like to add that nowhere in the world does auctions or do auctions happen anybody who's fit to mine and technically capable is given the block to mine let us see what would be the way forward for the government we will track this issue for you on news world india thank you so much for joining us on today's discussion mm -hmm.